What's good, everyone? I'm going to break down the seven hermetic principles or seven laws of Tehuti because I realize now that a lot of people, like, they'll come across this knowledge and come across this information. But, like, because of it being really stuck in, like, I want to say the 20th century in terms of how these things are explained, it's kind of hard to people to sort of understand why you would, why these, why are the seven hermetic principles even important? Why are the seven laws of Tehuti even valuable they seem like they're just like you know from some old religion from some kooky so it, it feels like it's like you how you see the movie plays where the you know the occults are doing these rituals and they're in the hoods and you see the pentagrams on the ground and so it seems kind of outplayed when really these are the sort of most important fundamentals you can use to really master life and when you're on the path of the magician you're really just trying to master life you're trying to no longer live like humans live like people live right realizing you're no longer a human and that process comes with a lot of things one of those things is understanding how the universe works and the seven hermetic principles are those things so i'm gonna break it down and while the order as i break them down in my mind makes sense because each principle as you understand them leads into the other one as in you need the the the, the first principle to understand the seventh one and each one after to understand each other I know that if you read some elsewhere, you'll have them, they'll be separated, they'll be they'll be different, like in different orders, but this order makes the most sense for me in order to explain and also to understand how to use them. All right, let's get it started. So the first principle, right, is called the law of mentalism. So it reads as this. The all is mind and the universe is mental. That's how the law is described. The breakdown is this how we understand reality at this moment is that you have to see reality from your five physical senses and those five physical senses right taste touch sight sound um hearing no taste taste touch sight um smell and i don't know why i keep forgetting the the, the fifth one but there's five senses and then you have your like thoughts and your emotions so you interact with this world as if what you see is real but it's not just that right be reacting with this world with how your mind projects outward and your assumptions about these things is real right you may see uh, a piece of hair and it ends up looking like a bug to you or you may see an optical illusion and you see something that's not really there right that's just kind of how the brain works the brain works as it basically distorts what reality is and therefore the illusion is you thinking that you're dealing with an external world and that there's a separation between your mind and the external. What the law of mentalism tells you is that that's just not true. There is no separation from your mind and the external because the external is a hologram. The external is a reflection, a, a really a small reflection. This, and I, when I mean the external, I mean the, the material universe, all of the matter in the universe. It's just a reflection of a larger giant mind, right? Then modern day, they'll call it the simulation theory. Um, and they'll say whether or not there is a simulation, whether or not it does, whether it makes sense. But really, what we need to understand is that everything that you can see now, everything that you can think of, everything that you can imagine exists as a representation, a symbol of or an expression, right? Whatever you want to call it, of this universal consciousness, this quantum consciousness, right? What we would call God, Godhead, right? This idea that what this, what this is, what existence is is really just one pervasive entity that merely appears separate from the aspect of like the egoic animal mind that exists to survive and once you realize this start how you utilize this is understanding is that therefore because you one exist right so therefore you're a part of this you are an aspect of this to have a mind means that you also sort of have your own mini simulation right you then become a representation right you're basically made in the image and likeness of god meaning that you have the ability to project outward onto this sort of sandbox so when you understand the law of mentalism what you understand is that because the you know the universe is mental because the all is mind and therefore you have a mind you are basically a miniature version of this so you can do 
all the things that are possible in this universe and beyond because you have an imagination. So you can do things that may not be possible in this physical universe, um, but exist in your mind it, and bring that forth. If you really can truly understand this. And when I mean understand, I don't mean like just, okay, you've heard me say this, so now you know. No, it means how you interact with the world needs to be from your mind in order to really actually utilize it. This is the foundation, like this is the beginning. You can't manifest anything, you can't do any magic, you can't do any spirituality, even the idea of going and returning to source. None of the things that you think you can do happens without the understanding of this. As long as you don't understand this principle and you therefore you think everything is separate, physical, God is separate from me, my ancestors are separate from me, everything I want exists somewhere else in some other time, you're kind of basically be stuck on the loop, right? And this is where Honestly, even the idea of, of being stuck in samsara, being stuck in reincarnation, the reason that is is because you're constantly idea of what well, everything that is, there should be or what I'm trying to be or what I'm trying to do is somewhere that's not me. But when you're saying that everything is mind and you are also mind, you are everything. And therefore, everything is within you. And the everything being within you brings us into the second hermetic principle. And that is the law of correspondence. And it's the law of correspondence is stated as above so below, as within, so without. And essentially what that is explaining is that once we understand that everything is universal consciousness, we can understand that the physical reality is a reflection, right? As above, so below. It's a reflection of something in what people would consider a higher plane of reality. But if we understand that everything is one, this higher plane then is not something else, right? It's not heaven as a different magical dimension it's not middle earth it's not uh an alternate timeline it's here right now but then what is the above well as it says as above so below as within so without the above is within and within is you in your mind right going back to the first law of mentalism your mind is the above what is considered the mental plane right you have all these different planes of existence like that you're in the tree of life and then you have the you know the causal plane and above that i think there's the buddhic and, and other planes but when it comes to how creation works right we focus on the causal then we have the mental and we have the astral we have the physical right so you have your mental your mind the mental plane where most of what we see as reality comes from um, at least the way it forms how forms down here then it sort of is, is charged with the astral or the emotional so you have your emotions that's another plane of existence and you have your physical your physical body right and before that you have your ethereal and you, and you know the ethereal because you, you feel energy you've ever felt that excitement or you ever felt low or when you feel like someone someone brings they someone brings the energy like their life of the party or you come into someone and they kind of bring everyone down or you've dealt with what is called energy vampires you've dealt with someone who you like you feel drained that's the etheric the etheric body so each plane or body is a reflection of each other so you have an etheric body that's just you but lighter you have an astral body which is where your personality and your emotions are you have a mental body which is higher and you have a call you have these different planes and therefore what this means is that with the law of mentalism everything is starting off as mind as this consciousness when you want something when something for something to exist it first has to exist at a higher plane right as above so below Therefore, it can't, nothing that exists here in the below, which is the physical, can ever be without the above, the higher planes, right? Which are just the different states, right? Different states of consciousness, if you think about them, right? You, you really, you access these, which are different perspectives. So when you meditate or if you're on DMT or when you're sleeping, you're in different states of consciousness. Um, your brain waves are at different frequencies. And therefore, you are, therefore, can access these planes that exist right now. Even something like being depressed, that depression, you know, how it changes how you look at things, how you, you're in a different state of consciousness, right? They even tell you about, you know, your brain not having enough dopamine or serotonin. There's one of those things, right? That, that alteration, you, that's a different state of consciousness. Therefore, you can only see all the bad shit that happens versus someone who can, you know, someone who's enlightened. They see things from a different perspective. Therefore, also, they, with the second part, as within, so without, so therefore those things being the same the below being the physical or the without the outside is corresponding with what's going on in the inside so not just the correspondence for example you have the different celestial bodies astrology as an example the things that happen in learning your astrological chart can help you navigate this reality because what is the physical reality happening right people don't understand is when we talk about astrology or how does the planets affect your personality because they're thinking about the planets of the physical physical planet and they're thinking about 
your physical body and your personality. Well, of course, from that perspective, it doesn't make sense because that's not how it works. What astrology is talking about is how different celestial bodies have different energies, or how these energies have different names. We've named them, we've applied the symbols of the planets, or the gods, or, or the zodiac signs to specific energies that exist in different realms, planes, states of, of being, states of consciousness. And when they do things, when they are affected by these specific laws, right, really the natural laws, but even other higher laws, they'll trickle down into affecting how you personally behave, right? So in the month, and therefore, how you get above that, how you get, how you, how you learn to master law of correspondence is being in those planes of existence. You work with the above, you work with your mind. When you work with your mind or you work with your internal states of being, you'll be able to not just master over what's without or what's below, but then that also means you can have connection with the things that affect them. So, you know, with spirits being able to deal with the planetary energies and actually use them to your advantage, right? You need that because you need to understand that's the order of operation. And this leads us with into the, the third, right? Why these energies do these things is because energy moves or the third law of 2D, which is the law of vibration. Everything vibrates and nothing's still. This one seems pretty simple, but I think it, it's so simple that people may misunderstand it, right? Because not only does, you know, is everything in conscious mind, not only is there reflections from different perspectives or different planes this energy moves what this is doing is movement or it's um, vibrating it's therefore vibrating on a frequency when you talk about your vibration or your frequency that's just the movement of molecules the movement of energy the traveling and transferring of something without that there would be there would not be right the vibration is the is the thing of the universe everything is energy everything vibrates how you actually understand this though, it's you understand that everything has, because everything has a vibration, right? Therefore everything has a frequency because to vibrate, right? To, 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 to um, oscillate at such a rate or at such a speed that you create this sort of up and down wave or frequency, right? Means that not only does this physical thing exist, this, this, this physical thing isn't just something, this is this chair, this phone, us talking, but that what it's doing is creating a pattern that comes out of it. Like if you've seen a radio wave, if you've seen um, radiation, these are waves that are projecting out of themselves, which means that for you to do something, right, for you to magnetize something, for you to, for you to line up with something to bring it into your reality, you have to be on its frequency. You have to vibrate like it. Because there's, the thing is, is that because everything vibrates, there is no actual difference between the molecules. There's not really a difference between you and me, right? How do you, how, if it were all universal mind, right? How is there even a correspondence? Why is there a difference? Why is there above and a below? Well, that's because the difference between the above and the below, what is that difference is its vibration. When you vibrate fast enough, high enough, you become above or simply you become out of perspective. You're out of your perception, right? Think about sound that is so, quiet you can't hear it right the low frequency or so high you can't hear it right you, you can't like perceive it because it's so light the light wave light band right you can only we can only see a very small percentage this little duality you'll get too far into the ultraviolet you can't see it you get to to the infrared you can't see it not without anything special not by your natural self but it, all that means is it's all the same it's all the same um fundamental particle but because it vibrates at such a different frequency it appears different to you and me appear different this phone appears different this uh the chair here the, the trees back here the wind the air molecules feel different because they're all vibrating differently but if you were to right how do you how do you deal with this well we go back everything is mind you have you, it, it, and it all is ex within you so for you to be able to even Activate or manipulate that frequency, that vibration, to become the vibration of that thing. What does that mean? It's you deal with your mind because your mind also emits those. Really, all is happening is your mind is emitting different frequencies and different vibrations in order to perceive the separation. So whatever you want it, however you use it, you need to become its vibration and frequency. How do you do that? Well, as, a, as above, so below, as within, so without. Meaning that whatever you're actually experiencing out there is just a representation of of whatever is going on within you. So if, for example, water represents fear to you because as a child you almost drowned in it, if when you see water inward with you, all the water is as a symbol is fear. You're afraid of water. 
So it represents that. So that's the frequency that you have with water. If all you've seen, if you've seen this very, very attractive person, very beautiful person, right? And you think, oh, all the lives were happy together. Oh, and you start imagining it too, right? Like you start fantasizing about it. That person then represents greatest bliss and joy, right? And so this, and this is how you, and this, and with this, with these three laws alone, right? If you understand these three laws, you kind of understand manifestation. The, the other four help because there are other forces that matter. But like in terms of like utilizing it, law of mentalism, law of correspondence, and law of vibration. Because what you understand is that everything is a symbol within your mind. And for the frequency is simply how you feel about that. You just change your feeling. You match that frequency. You become it or you attract it. Though... The four, really the three laws, the, the, if I were to break it up, the first three laws are the laws of attainment. When you understand these laws, you learn how to attain reality. The next four laws, though, are basically, I would say, the laws of change. Because these are the laws that would get in the way or that would, if you didn't know how to utilize those laws as well, you could lose what you attained or stop you from attaining. And the, fourth, the, the first of those or the fourth law ties into this, the law of rhythm. Basically, everything has an... A contraction and an expansion. Everything goes up and down. Everything goes in and out. It's a constant cycle. There's life. There's there's birth, life, sustenance, death, and it goes in this cycle. There's spring, summer, fall, winter, spring, summer, fall, winter. Everything has an undulation because the waves, the frequencies, always go up. They always go down. Nothing vibrates at the same rate forever. It has to either slow or speed up. And so this means why you go through anything bad, why anything dies, why things change is because their frequency is never stagnant. It's never the same. It's not only do things always vibrate, they never vibrate the same way. There's always going to be an upward and a downward. There's always going to be a high and a low, which means that, yes, you could manifest what you want, but understanding because of the law of rhythm, there's not only a chance, there's an inevitability that you have to lose it, right? There's some fact that you die. Everything dies. Everything fades away. And then it comes back and is something new, right? You'll never be able to keep your wealth forever, your relationship forever, because even if you can manifest it, you can't manifest them immortal. And therefore, why the fourth law is for the first law of, I, you know, the, the first three laws, I would say laws of attainment, how you attain your reality. The, the fourth law and the laws after it would be how you lose it is because if you're not aware of this, you may be man, having a good time, experience a good time. The law of rhythm comes through. You go through a bad time. And what does that do? That changes your internal. So now you're going back. You're vibrating. We go back to the law, the three law. You're vibrating lower or you're in a frequency where, well, shit's bad. So you feel bad as above. So below you hit back to that, that second law. And now your inner state, your above state is showing all the pain and suffering. And that's just going to be projected outward because the law of mentalism is all in your mind. So then what do you do, right? How do you deal with the, the this this first law of laws? The idea that everything will have to change eventually. Everything will have to go down eventually. You will have to deal with some shit eventually. No matter what, no matter if you, you, you can become, unless you, the only way to get out of these laws is to not be on this physical plane. So as long as you're physical plane, no matter how much of a master you are, you have to deal with these laws. How do you deal with them? And that becomes with this sort of subset, which is the law of neutralization. Understanding this, understanding that you're going to have peaks and lows means two things. One, every time you're in a low, understand you're going to get into a peak. So what do you do? You maintain your inner self. You maintain your reaction. You have a control over your emotions what, and, and your thoughts and your beliefs. This is the real work of alchemy, right? The way you master this law, right? The way you right? master the first two laws is really mastering how to understand them and apply them. Mastering the fourth law is mastering how not to react to the situation, Right? And then understanding that, okay, you're enjoying a good time, but don't get caught up and lost in it. Or so when it, therefore it goes, what are you going to try to do? Try to run back to gain it again, right? And then you forget the first, because what happens with the fourth law is it why it's, the, in my mind, the first law of loss is it makes you lose, forget the first two laws. You're having such a good time, or you're, you say you're in a shitty time, you've been in a shitty time, and it's so hard to see anything out of it. You can't imagine a good time. Well, you can't utilize the law of mentalism, the law of correspondence, or the law of vibration. Because you'll forget. You have to remember. Remember that it's coming. So remember the ups are coming and remember the downs are coming. And remain neutral as in keep a awareness of your thoughts, awareness of your emotions, awareness of this. Don't let it, don't get caught up in this because it's good or bad. Understand that at the end of the day, that's just the nature of, the, of, of reality. 
And therefore, because that's its nature and therefore you understand its nature, you can always be above. Which means that even when shit's bad happening, you might not be dealing with it the way other people are dealing with it. And when it's good happening, you can enjoy it. But then not even because even what happens is when you get too caught up in it, what starts to happen, you start to think about, well, what if it's gone? Because internally, you understand that this isn't forever. And what happens is the fear and anxiety. And then you start to change it because of, of that state. So that's the, the first law of loss, the fourth law of, of Tahuti, law of vibration. Now we're going to get into the fifth law. Uh, another one that could get you messed up if you don't understand it. And that's the law of cause and effect. So we learn. So the thing about the law of cause and effect is that it's simple, like the law of vibration, but it's so simple that what ends up happening in when things are so simple is people like to add on extra subsets to complicate it, right? So you have the law of attraction, the law of assumption, the law of magnetism, right? All of which are just subsets of the law of cause and effect, right? Which is basically every effect has a cause, every cause creates an effect. There are no coincidences, merely just of this law unrecognized. So basically, whatever exists now had to have something that brought it into existence. That's it. And while that seems simple, the the, the trick, right? Why this can be a law, like this, in my mind, is considered, I consider a law of loss, is that if you don't understand the first four laws, if you don't understand especially the first three, the laws of attainment, you don't actually understand what those causes are and you're merely playing around with the with the effect, um, which is why they come up with the law of attraction, right? Or they come up with the law of assumption, the law of magnetism, because all really these three laws do, these three subset laws do, is they take the law of mentalism and the law of correspondence and the law of vibration, kind of smack them together, and they attach it. And they kind of remove it, and that's the thing that they'll water it down, because to do that together, you have to not know these laws, and then they attach it to the law of cause and effect and call it law of magnetism, right? You're magnetizing something towards you. But you only do that when you have the first three laws. So... Knowing the law of cause and effect, understand is well, where is the cause? Well, the cause is within, and the cause is in the mind. What is the effect? The effect is the physical. Every everything physical. So now that we understand this, right, and then we know that everything changes, right? The law of rhythm. So now when we see change, when we see an effect, and we see this physical world, when we interact with the physical world, we understand that this is the effect, and then the vibrations, the frequencies, the thoughts, beliefs, and internal ideas are the cause. That's that's the that's the explanation of the law of cause and effect, because if you don't understand this, then you we will what you lose. What is the loss is thinking that well, cause and effect is only on the physical plane. Mm -mm. The cause is the, the mental, the emotional, the inner, the above. The effect is the below, the without, the physical. And now this goes up into well, we four five laws now, six laws. We're almost there. Um, and this is this is, I think, the the. I think one of the most dangerous laws, I say dangerous, but it's this law I think gets people wrapped up the most, and that's the law of polarity. Law of polarity states that all truths are half truths, um, and everything must contradict. I think I'm saying that right. I might get that last part wrong, but I know everything. Everything has to have a contradiction. Um, and basically, what the law of polarity essentially shows is that everything that we see. Basically, what the law of polarity is letting us understand is that we live in a world of duality, right? We live in separation. The law of polarity basically explains this illusion, the idea that there is such thing as good and evil. There is such thing as hot and cold. There is such thing as black and white. There is such a thing as desirable and undesirable, hard and soft, right? The, 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 what it's saying, though, is that these separations, these dualities are not actually real. The difference between hot and cold is the fact that they're just temperature. That's just a movement of the molecule, right? It moves hot, it moves faster, it's hot, it moves slower, it's cold, right? Good and bad is perspective, right? What is good to you may, may be bad to me. It's the idea that merely just being and being unaware of this law means that you can get wrapped up in your identity, in your politics, in your uh, taste, in your distaste, in your own trauma, and every single person can do that for their own specific positions. And the thing about it is they're all right because it's a matter of how they view it because of the first of the, the first five laws because of how everything affects them and how their mind views it. They're always right. And therefore, in order to understand the law of polarity, right, the only to, to, to understand or how to get above it or not how to follow it, because falling in it is to believe that that there is a right and wrong. 
there is a binary way of being. There are only true genders. Uh, I know people get upset at that, but like that, 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 that idea that there can only be this one way. And then someone has, well, no, this is only this one way. And no, this one no, actually is this one way. And they're all right, but they're all falling under polarity. So how is this to me the law? Why would I consider this under the law of laws? Because the problem is, is when you view that, when you label it that way, you will automatically then label, well, what is good and bad to me in a situation um, is seeing this place as real as the as the as the as not this the end result but also the the genesis of it right it's similar to the law of cause and effect what makes these laws laws of loss and same with law of rhythm what makes these laws laws of loss is that they is that you're unaware of the higher laws that start this right that everything's one that everything's universal mind you believe in this separation so you believe that there is one way to do things when really there's just a bunch of different perspectives um and when you understand that what you end up doing is being what is is considered um being the middle point where you can view all these different perspectives and understand the truth in all of them but never be stuck or identified with one really how you fall into law of polarity is identifying with that view you may have your own view you may have your own belief you may still have it you may not give it up but it no longer gets to the point where you have to defend it we have to argue we have to convince people of it my religion is the right religion right and that's with everything. Everyone can have their own opinion things. And that's the point because that's because all of these are true. All truths are half truths. Everything must contradict. There must be duality. There must be polarity. There must be opposites because the opposites are actually the same thing. And when you become above that, how does this factor into the other laws? How do you keep it yourself from losing what you attain in the first three laws is not judging a situation or even a person based off of your own personal bias. Instead, understanding what's going on and acting accordingly. Something happens, you may not like it, and you don't have to like it, but ne don't get wrapped up in judging what this is and isn't. Because once you do that, all those laws come back to bite you. Um, because now you're giving it meaning, meaning you don't like it, you become identified and attached with it, you give it attention energy, law, cause, and effect. Um, you forget that the natural thing is there's going to be a good and bad and everything. There's going to be an up and down. There's going to be things you'd like and don't like, law of rhythm. Um, so you're under that. So now you're reacting to the outside world above and below. You're projecting outwards. Law of mentalism is on your mind. And now a situation you hate because of your polarity that you fall under becomes the the becomes your new reality. And now you're in a reality that you hate because you you're too busy focusing on what is right and wrong versus trying to understand the both two and holding what truths can come from both and discarding what truths don't because you're still going to have your own perspective but understand that that perspective you have is just a perspective a perspective that has to exist anyway because we're in duality and understanding this polarity i think is important because when you understand this you can finally understand the seventh law and i think is the most important law and that's the law of gender and the reason why i say it's the most important law is because especially as a trans woman right and if you're trans and queer and you've come across this, you've come across the law of gender and you've kind of, you've scratched your head. And that's because I think, one, the law is a little bit more obscured. It's more abstract. It's probably the most abstract law. As you go down, the laws become harder to explain because now they're dealing with things a little bit more esoteric. Um, and because of that, and because people are stuck in polarity, right? Most people are stuck in the sixth law. They see the law of gender and they have attached their polarity to it. So they're like, oh, there's a man and woman and everything. Everything has a male and female part. No. So the law of gender basically states is that everything in the universe has these two, you could say opposing, or you could say complementary forces, a masculine and a feminine. And within every masculine force is a feminine force, and in every feminine force is a masculine force, right? So think about the, um, think about the, the yin and the yang, right? The black dot in the uh, white um, half, and then the white dot in the black half. Every every opposite has basically what it says is every you know it's and it's similar to law of polarity. In its opposite, in its opposite, in its in its um, reflective energy is that same principle, right? So when it says that everything has these two polarities, masculine and feminine, and with every masculine is a feminine, every feminine and masculine. Understand is when masculine and feminine is is a symbol, right? When we understand the when we understand the first six laws, we can understand, especially with the first law, that everything is in the mind. So what gender is? It's a symbol. And it's an emotion, right? Because it, it has to represent from and above, right? And people say, oh, gender's real. No, no, gender's not real. It's an emotion because the law, the second law of correspondence. What are the corresponding genders? The correspondence is feeling, is emotion, is uh, the above, a higher plane, right? Because in the higher plane, right? Because, it, but, you know, when you get to a higher, higher plane of existence, everything is one energy. However, because it fell into duality, 
it had to break into polarity and that's what we get the masculine and feminine as symbols for really their symbols of what they represent because they represent many different things but what they represent from this perspective is receptivity um and um stillness and darkness versus activity projection and light so the masculine is the light or the projection outward or the action and the feminine is the darkness the stillness the receptivity right and all the actual genders are um are merely dressed aspects of those complementary forces which are one thing and more importantly within for example the feminine right within the stillness within the receptivity within uh the darkness is light is action is movement because law you understand all these laws the law of vibration everything moves so nothing is truly still and then we understand because of the law of polarity everything's the same in the masculine in the light in that activity in that projection there is a stillness there is a darkness there is a there is a receptivity so what that means is within you you have the ability to move and act and do things in the world and you have the ability to consume and receive and gestate and and think about and emote and feel and still and those are the energies and they all play in everybody and everything right so when you see people how people basically basically how you fail or how you fall under the law of gender not you know how to use this is what cisgender people are doing they believe that they are born their gender they believe that it's based off their genitalia that it that this physical illusion is real and that that they have to not just do those things but also all the things and ideas that a specific society may say a man and woman should do which is just polarity which is the sixth law which is again there's no real difference between and, and from a social context what a man does and what a woman does it's all just one thing but depending on the vibration uh but you believe it's so different and in your patriarchy so you believe that there's a superior and an inferior um and that we are where we are now you know, and even then people who don't really understand this will say, well, my masculine energy, my feminine energy, I mean, my feminine energy means, no, you're in your feminine energy anytime you're asleep, anytime you're eating, anytime you're sitting, anytime you're meditating. You're in your masculine energy anytime you do anything. So you can't be in or out of your masculine energy or in or out of your feminine energy. But what you can do is be out of balance. And really being out of balance just means ignoring the fact that you are these things in the first place. And when you put your, again, we, now we have all the six laws you understand once you do that once you're out of balance you're in polarity you're in polarity um you don't you don't really actually understand cause and effect and how things start and how things end because you don't have these two these these the understanding of these concepts you understand the change vibration correspondence the mind and it, and that's how you you lose um so basically from what i have downloaded and from what I have studied meditated on the physical representation or how you how you deal with the law of gender is being is the law it, I would call the law of androgyny understanding you are both of these principles you are the one right the trinity the masculine feminine and then the the, the child the androgyny am I the divine but right? yeah the divine feminine divine masculine in my mind of under androgyny and androgyny, androgyny is just the one which is this the which is so that for everything and the duplicity and the infinite is that so in my mind, being trans, being non-binary, is the representation of the one, right? Because if the if the if the represent if the symbol of the of the masculine and feminine is the man and the woman, then the 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 symbol of them combining, and it's not combining as in you're both man and woman. No, 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 no. Is that you can hold both polarity energies, and then they'll they'll take the shape and form of whatever it is they need to take, because they're no longer you're no longer trapped in these two polar polarities you understand that they're just the same thing so therefore whatever image whatever shape whatever color it takes is merely just a different representation of it and it would be an infinite one anyway because the mind is all universal mental and you can infinitely think of anything so therefore there can be there is an infinite amount of genders you only believe there's not because you fall into polarity so therefore there has to be a limited number there has to be this there has to be that that's the law of polarity all things exist and all things are true because all things must contradict Right, because it's all one thing in the first place. It's always been just one thing. Um, so in that way, I think, as, especially if you're you're you're, you're trans and you, you're studying these things, and you come a law of gender. Don't get too worried about it. Understand is that you are the law of gender, realized. 
It doesn't even matter how you feel. You can say, well, I mean, I'm not really a masculine, I'm a trans woman, or I'm a trans man, I'm not really a feminine. It's not about that. It's not about the, the social representations. That doesn't mean anything. We're talking about the energy of action and receptivity, which is something you do all the time. You just have those things. Um, therefore, you know, and therefore you utilize them the way you can for whatever benefit, right? Sometimes you're going to need to be receptive. Sometimes you need to be proactive and it just depends on the situation, but you have always have those qualities. Uh, and therefore, even within the sort of gender constructs of, of, of humanity, right? That, well, you know, women do this with their hands and their hips and they're nurturing and they're mothering and men are strong, they're protective and, 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 and violent. Uh, th th those things exist with you anyway. You have capacity for violence and nurture and care and softness and toughness. Because that's just being a human being. That means being a full human being means being able to be all of these things. Because they're all the same anything. Right? Within each one, within whatever we call a masculine, there's going to be a feminine aspect of it. And whatever we call a feminine aspect of it, it's going to be masculine. Whatever we even label still must have it because those are just aspects that have to fall under the universal. And they're not removed from that. Hell, the genitalia are all the same. The penis is the clitoris. The testes is the ovum. You know, they, it just depends. On it, and it changes based on the frequency. And that frequency is the hormones in the body. And then, and they can change after you're born to ask a trans man. That shit can change. It literally can change. So I, I, understanding these understanding these laws, I spent a lot of time on that one because I knew the law of gender would it's definitely going to fuck a lot of people up. I think it's the one that's hardest because of how polarizing it is, because of how much people fall under the sixth law. But I think this breakdown, this explanation, when you can, the three laws of, of, of attainment to get what you want. And then these four laws to, to basically what the, the four laws explain basically how to maintain that. Right. And really what you're maintaining is your internal state, your internal self, because once you maintain the internal self, so learning these four laws, you'll never lo really lose those things because you understand what these things are outside of you anyway, are just within you. So whatever change happens, you're still going to be good. You're still going to you're not going to fall over because you manifested this house and now you're going to get it gets foreclosed. Right. You get in a relationship, but now you get divorced, which is what happens. A lot of people when they get into spirituality, when they get into magic is that they don't know these laws at all. So they're just trying to get their quick fix. And it, and it happens because they use the sign. They, when you use the science, even if you don't know the science, it works. Right. You can you can use a car without knowing how to break the car down and put the car together. You can eat food without learning how to cook food or you can you can you can prepare food without having to like, for example, making you can make a pancake without knowing how to actually process flour, right? You can do these things and still get a result, and that's the same with magic. You don't have to actually understand what are the fundamental principles to get these laws. The problem comes is people, they overestimate their abilities because they can just use the tools, right? Monkeys can use tools. The true master knows how to use these, so that way the tools are relevant, the tools right here. And as long as you have control here, Shit, this shit's a cakewalk. This shit really is a video game. So, I'm going to go to back to reading. I hope this was helped y'all. Let me know if you want more, like, educational stuff, because I have a lot of information and knowledge. And it's and, uh, for me, it's important that it, this gets out. This gets out for as much as possible, because I really don't see stuff like this out, especially, like, the very basic, 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 basic stuff. Because I, I think a lot of people are trying to get this knowledge, and they're really hungry for this. Um, that's why I feel I got the... The, the sort of download or the channel to do this. I got this imprint, impressed on my spirit to be like, hey, dude, then I've been, I have had this for a long time. I have this for like seven, for like a year, but I didn't want to, but now I'm, I'm, I've had the confidence to be like, oh, I'm just going to tell you these laws, explain them and really get the breakdown. But anyway, peace.